ladies and gentlemen, the Railroad Hour. And here comes our star-studded show train. Tonight, the Association of American Railroads presents the rousing Rudolph Frimmel operetta, The Three Musketeers, starring Gordon McRae and his charming guest, Dorothy Warren Show. Our choir is under the direction of Norman Luboff, and the music is prepared and conducted by Carmen Dragon. Yes, tonight another great musical success is brought to you by the American Railroads, the same railroads that bring you most of the food you eat, the clothes you wear, the fuel you burn, and all the other things you use in your daily life. And now, here is our star, Gordon McRae. Thank you, Marvin Miller, and good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Tonight, we're going back to the adventurous days of Louis XIII. Dorothy Warnshold is the lovely lady-in-waiting, Constance. And my name is D'Artagnan. And may I present... Monsieur Porthos. At your service. Monsieur Artos. Monsieur Medard. Monsieur Aramis. Your humble servant. And do you know who we are? We are the musketeers. Old oh, dashing musketeers. Stout comrade musketeers. Bound to ride side by side. To and side. We began when I first came to Paris, a very young recruit from Gascony, and I stumbled right on to the Three Musketeers. Uh, well, trust Porthos. Uh, how can such a fat man duel so magnificent? Are we not musketeers, and what is a musketeer's duty? To fight, to love, to live, and the devil take Richelieu's guards. Uh, <laughs> we do not take them first. Gentlemen. Musketeers. My lady Constance. Oh, my dear friends. Athos the melancholy, Portos the portly one, and Aramis the heartbreaker. Uh, dear Constance, you must choose one of us. Yes, tell us, what kind of a man do you wish to marry? What kind of man? Well, someone attractive, gallant and active, daring, forbearing. She's thinking of me. Yeah. <laughs> 
shall fight for you to be the he. Indeed, we shall fight. Stop, gentlemen. Stop, please, I beg you. Do not fight among yourselves. The lady ordered you to stop. Uh, uh, idiot! You've knocked the very blade from my hand. And you walked on my feet. And ripped my cape. Who are you that you dare to stumble on us like that? My name is D'Artagnan. I am from Gascony. And I have come to Paris to become a musketeer. Well, you've made a bad beginning. Young Sprout, I challenge you to a duel. I accept. Only because I am the best swordsman in France. Behind the Luxembourg at noon. Agreed. Sir, you have equally insulted me. I challenge you to a duel. Behind the Luxembourg at one. He won't be alive to be present. As for me, you've insulted both my feet and me. Behind the Luxembourg at two. Very convenient. It is where I live. Good. It is where you will die. Come, musketeers, to your duties. Uh, Oh, monsieur, you should not have accepted their challenges. They are the musketeers, the best swordsmen in France. Uh, The second best. Thank you for your concern, mistress... uh... Constance. Constance. Lovely name for a lovely girl. Ah, he's romantic, too. Ah, yes. I'm not only the greatest swordsman in France, but the greatest lover. Ah, you are not the most modest man in France, monsieur. Well, I have been taught to speak frankly. And Mistress Constance, in Gascony, when we see a girl who is more beautiful than any we've ever seen before, we do this. We take her hand. Yes. We look into her eyes. Yes. And then we say... Marble, Marble, you are so charming, I'm enchanted with you. Marble, Marble, your eyes are daring me and thrilling me too. Every smile invites me. Tantalizing, whispering, wake me, come and take me. Marble, marble, forever I shall stay beneath your spell. I'll be my whole life through, adoring you. see you again. Tell me where and when. Oh, monsieur, you must not duel with the three musketeers. They will kill you. I am honored and thrilled at your concern, Mistress Constance. But there are only two things I wish in life. Love of a good woman and the chance to become one of the king's musketeers. Only by proving I am their equal can I become one of them. <laughs> Ah, so I see. Uh, I didn't expect all three of you at once. But uh, there may not be enough of me to go around. We're each other's seconds. We'll take you on one at a time. No. Why not let me fight all three of you at once? Sir, you're a brave young man. And if you survive my sword, I shall be most happy to make your acquaintance. Thank you. Monsieur Porthos, you are first. <laughs> Boy, I like your spirit. 
What a pity I have to annihilate you. Onga! Stop! I order you to stop dueling in the name of his eminence, Richard. Here is that big gun! Take those red coated dummies with you. You insult my men. We challenge you. Just a moment, Shazak. Surely even you wouldn't attack three men with your five. There are four of you. This young Gascon, he's no musketeer. I feel like a musketeer. Retire, young Sprout, and save your skin. I'd rather stay and puncture Monsieur Jusac. Very well, Jusac. It's three and a half to five. Hongas, musketeers, let's serenade them with our motto as they die. <laughs> <laughs> D'Artagnan, your duel nobly. Would like to become your friend. And, and I. I. Thank you, gentlemen. Oh, thank dear heaven. Oh, you are still alive. What's this? Constance, such concern for us. Oh, you're not dead, Monsieur D'Artagnan. I thought you would be lost. Ah, uh, this is the he for her. Live, dear lady. My eyes are still open. I'll be looking only at you. Oh, monsieur. girl in France loves me. Oh, how can I fail? All I wish in life now is to become a musketeer. Perhaps one day you shall wear our uniform. May we say there is hope. Thank you, my friends. On hope, a man lives. I have read history and I've heard tales of brave men, but none were like the musketeers. <laughs> of yore, a score of heroes there have been with quite a claim to name and fame. Still in life, and the end of fight, and long in song, with fervent admiration, poets have extolled their doings bold. Very bold, so and cold, were those men of old. And yet, one 
and all they seem small to these men of whom one hears. Two for you, two for you, two for you. Placed beside the king's own musketeers. We are the musketeers, oh, dashing musketeers. Bound to ride side by side, true and side. We found for years and years. No folk can hide his fears when faced by musketeers. He wisely disappears. War and daring, we are ever sharing. Strangers to danger, indeed. Kiss a maid or sack a town or ride a bowman down as one for all and all for one. We stand or fall united. We are the musketeers, bold oh, dashing musketeers, stalwart and musketeers. Come what may, stand or fall, all for one and one for all. Turn for the second act of the Three Musketeers in just a moment. Last week and on several previous occasions, we discussed on this program how important it is to all of us that our railroads receive adequate revenues. Revenues that today can come only from freight rates which are in keeping with current prices and the higher cost of doing business. Because railroad freight charges enter into the price of virtually everything you buy, you might think that freight rates constitute a much larger part of the cost of things than they do. As a matter of fact, railroad freight rates are a very small percentage of the cost of most commodities. According to calculations based on studies by the Bureau of Transport Economics and Statistics of the Interstate Commerce Commission, the total amount collected by the railroads in freight charges averages less than six cents out of each dollar of the wholesale value at destination of all the commodities moved by rail. And, of course, when it comes to retail prices, freight charges represent a still smaller proportion. Probably no more than three or four cents on the dollar. Because their operating costs have gone up so much farther and faster than their revenues, the railroads have found it necessary to ask the Interstate Commerce Commission for authority to increase freight rates a little more than 7% above present rate levels. But that would not mean a like percent of increase in average prices. It would mean only an increase in those three or four cents out of each dollar of retail prices which are represented by railroad freight charges, so that the increase would be, on the average, only about one-third of one cent in each dollar of retail prices. If freight rates are such as to enable the railroads to meet today's costs and to continue their progress in efficiency and economy through improvements in their facilities, the resulting increase would hardly be noticeable in the prices you pay. But it would mean that the industry in which we all have such a big stake could go ahead with its expansion and improvement program, a program essential to meet the transportation needs of commerce and national defense. Now here is Act Two of the Lawrence and Lee version of Rudolph Frimmel's The Three Musketeers, starring Gordon McRae as D'Artagnan and Dorothy Warrenshold as the lovely Constance. My friends, the musketeers, Milady the Queen is in great danger. We live to serve her. Tell us, Constance, tell us what we can do. Richelieu has discovered letters of the Queen's in England. Letters such as any girl writes when she is young. But the Queen is a woman now. She loves France. She loves the King. Then what value have the letters? Richelieu plans to use them to split the royal family, to split all of France, and, and thus come to power himself. One of us will go to England. We will get the letters and destroy them. Richelieu's guards wait like rats at the wharves. Any of you who try to leave France will be killed. Then I shall go. Richelieu does not know my face. Not yet. Oh, no, D'Artagnan. We will never see you again. We will all go together. 
One for all. I all for one. I will go alone. No, not alone. My oldest friend will go with me. My sword will clear my way. My sword will make them pay. Who's afraid or who will face a blade that brings you blood, death, and judgment day? My will defy Rats to rabble Here is my reply We stand alone We can defend my own We live to fight Love, my sword and noise Who dares My will defy Rats to rabble Here is my reply We stand alone We can defend my own We live to fight There is danger for you here, my lady Constance. If Richelieu knows you plot against him... We must each go down dangerous paths, dear friend. I shall remember the look in your eyes. That memory will make me brave. And the look in your eyes, dear Constance, will make me invincible. Oh, the path that I must tread is full. Dread and dark and dream. A light will be shining to guide you, guide you, guide you. Going forever beside you, casting out your fear. Stop worrying. You are in love with him, aren't you? Oh, yes, Porthos. Here your Constance. For love is the law of the universe. Listen. D'Artagnan. D'Artagnan. Oh, he's coming back. We met this young Sprout of Calais and raced him back here in the fastest carriage. We knew there would be uh, somebody waiting. Mistress Constance, may I report that the work is accomplished? The deed is done. Her Majesty the Queen is safe. Musketeers, about face! This young sprout has some more work to do. Oh, Marble, Marble! Your Majesty. 
Rise, Monsieur d'Artagnan. I've heard from my musketeers of your service to our country. They ask that I appoint you a musketeer. But, but you're already wearing the uniform. I, I was not certain of your intention, sire. So I put it on so you could see how well I look in it. <laughs> you are an anxious young man. Tell me, in exactly what manner did you serve us in France? Well, sire, it was a question of love. Of love, your majesty. Love? Of one of the queen's ladies, Mademoiselle Constance. But I'm afraid she will not have me unless I'm a member of the great camaraderie, sire. A fourth musketeer. Kneel, Monsieur d'Artagnan. Oh, your majesty. I, Louis, King of France, appoint you, D'Artagnan, one of my musketeers, to love, to live, to fight for France. Your Majesty, I serve you with my life, and Mademoiselle Constance, I serve forever. We found for years and years, no folk can hide his fears. When faced by musketeers, he wisely disappears. War and daring, we are ever sharing. Strangers through dangers, indeed. To laugh and love and serve the king and live for his freedom. To kiss a maid or sack a town or ride a bowman down. There's one for all and all for one. We stand the wall united, we are the musketeers. Dorothy Warren Scholl will be back in just a moment. Meanwhile, our very heartfelt thanks to the other members of our cast, Francis X. Bushman, Bill Conrad, Ted DeCorsia, Bill Johnstone, Carlton Young, and to our entire company. The Three Musketeers with book by William Anthony McGuire, lyrics by P.G. Wodehouse and Clifford Gray, and music by Rudolph Frimmel, was dramatized for the Railroad Hour by Lawrence and Lee. And now here again is our delightful leading lady, Dorothy Warren Scholl. Wasn't that romantic, though? Well, it certainly was, Dorothy. Frankly, I swashed the buckle right off my belt. (laughs) It certainly is good to have you back, though, Dorothy. You know, we we really consider you part of our railroad family. Well, thank you, Gordon. And, of course, you know I never miss one of your broadcasts. Tell me, what can I listen to next week? Well, sir, maybe Benzel will be our guest, Dorothy. And we're presenting the delightful Romberg-Hammerstein operetta... East Wind. Well, now, that sounds like a nice, breezy show. <laughs> Good night, Gordon. Well, you come back real soon, Dorothy. All aboard. Sir, it looks like we're ready to pull out and so on to next Monday night and East Wind. This is Gordon McRae saying goodbye. <laughs> The Three Musketeers was presented by special arrangement with the Tams Whitmark Music Library. Gordon McRae can be seen starring in Warner Brothers Starlift. Our choir is under the direction of Norman Luboff, and our music is prepared and conducted by Carmen Dragon. This is Marvin Miller saying goodbye until next week for the American Railroads. Now keep tuned for your Monday night of music on NBC. Hear the voice of Firestone with Eugene Connolly next on NBC.